All right. Well, that was a pretty quick turnaround, I'll say, from last week to just being like, I don't like anybody. I don't care about this show anymore, I don't think. I will say we got a proper send-off for the king, you know. You know, a mighty episode for the king. I would have to say, you know, when it comes down to it, I liked him overall. You know, although he had that he had that uh, conversation very, like, if you can call it a conversation, Basically, the princess was like, you know, for all this good you think you've done, you named me heir and divided everybody, you know? Fucked everything up. And then it all kind of surrounds around her boys, the bastard boys, and, uh, you know, now the Driftwood guy, the king, the sea snake, whatever they call that guy, he appears to be killed in battle or something. And it seemed like that her boys were going to be uh, the bastard boys. It seemed like they were going to be the heirs to that. And now the brothers, like, look, man, I got the, you know, there was that, there was the argument a few weeks ago, blood versus name. You know, the sea snake, I guess, if that's who he is. Uh, he was like, look, it's about the name. Nobody remembers blood. It's all about the name. Let's just keep the name alive. Even if those boys are bastards, whatever, they're going to take over. Well, the brother had something to say, and I don't know, it's weird, that blood versus name thing. I think I kind of agree with him. You know, and he was even like, look at them, man, come on, it's obvious, they're not one of us. But he probably stepped over the line when he called them bastards, and then he definitely stepped over the line when he called Renera a whore, you know, and that's not going to fly, even though I did agree with the guy. I think he had a strong argument. You know, I guess these there's some rules, you know, the king come limping in, and he was like, why are we even arguing about this? I've already said I know you guys thought I was basically dead, and he was basically dead. But he comes in, you know, gives his uh, gives his two cents. They have the dinner. He gives the speech there. Oh, but you know, to finish off on that, I think I was kind of with the guy on the blood with the blood, you know. But maybe the other brother was right. Maybe people remember names; they don't remember blood. But they sure remember what you look like when you got silver dreadlocks. I mean, come on, replacing them with these two guys, a couple of Chad looking kids. So, uh, you know, and there's obviously still tension there. And that one is one annoying thing. You know, they keep time jumping on us and like decades pass or two years pass or five years pass and every, there's still all this tension, but nothing really happens. At least finally, you know, and like I said, when the guy crossed the line and called her a whore whoosh, off with his head, says Damon. Um, so finally somebody, you know, all this tension led to somebody at least getting their head cut off. It's like, look, man. And then, um, I uh, just got a trade alert from the Browns and, <laughs> One trade's really going to help. They trade their fucking whole coaching staff yet. Anyways, <laughs> let's not get into that. Um, so, oh yeah, and then the pro there was a little bit, there was a piece about the prophecy at the beginning. Renero was like, is it true? Do I have to be in charge, you know? And then at the end, the king, I don't know if the king even knew who he was talking to. Did he think he was talking to Renero again? He's like, yeah, Aegon's dream. And, you know, they show the dagger. Seemed like he was going to say something about the Night King or something. I don't know, but I don't know if the queen really, I don't know if he knew who he was talking to there, but she was like, all right, man, he said it. He said, I got to be the one that rules. I don't know something about Prince Aegon's dream. And she's like, Aegon? She thinks he meant their son, Aegon, I think, right? I don't know. So I guess, A, where are you at on the blood versus name? I'm kind of torn there. I think I agreed with the blood guy, but then, you know, he went Rick James on us and habitually crossed the line. Very likable moment for Damon. I guess say Damon won me back. He went up, he helped his brother up the steps to the throne. He cut that guy's head off. Not going to let anybody talk about it. He's not going to let anybody call Renera a whore. Calling those kids bastards, all right. You might get away with that. She's not going to talk about his uh, niece slash wife. And even the queen. She seemed to turn a corner a bit there. I don't know. Her dad, the hand of the king. I can't stand that guy. I can't wait for his day to come. All right, I guess that does it. It's it's kind of weird, you know, if you know Game of Thrones and you know some of the names, you're like, eh, I ain't going to make it. All right, guys, boom, we're out of here. <sighs> Rest in peace to the king. Boy, how was he hanging in there, man? Man, I got had all sorts of problems. Boom, we're out of here. That, uh, the eye patch kid, Amon. No dragons this week. No little finger guy this week. Laris, good. Sir Kristen got very little screen time. It's kind of all about that blood versus name thing and those bastard kids. The king kind of giving his lad, like, you know, she told him, like, man, you divided us all when you named me heir. He gave that strong speech at dinner, tried to bring it all back together. The eye patch guy was like, fuck, Grandpa, I'm blowing this shit up. Boom, we're out of here.